If you don't know me already, I'm Lorraine Mulroney. I have a three-year-old daughter. We've had three miscarriages. Two of those were early and we had one missed miscarriage at 13 weeks when we went to our scan. Uh, we took a year and a half to try and conceive our next pregnancy, our fifth pregnancy, and we found out we were having a little girl. We got to 34 weeks in that pregnancy with her and today I'm going to be telling you the story of how she was stillborn, I guess, um, how the experience was for me. Um, very emotional video, I'm probably gonna cry, so just bear with. I already feel the throb in my throat, but I'm determined to do this, I feel like I need to do it, I need to just vent it all out, say out loud really what happened, and yeah, just let it out, and hopefully it will help someone watching this video. Just before I start this video off, I wanted to tell you her name, um, we knew her name from, I think it was about 20 weeks, um, we had it set in our minds. We actually thought of the name on holiday, when we was on our summer holiday of 2017, and we were adamant that is what she was going to be called. Um, we didn't tell anyone her name until after she was born. So we're going to be talking about my daughter Primrose today, who was still born at 34 weeks. And we do know the reasons as to why she passed away, unfortunately. Um, and a blessing all in itself to know why now um, but obviously it's very painful to talk about and it's not something that it's not something that I want to talk about in today's video because I don't really think it's relevant I just want to talk about the experience of her birth at a later date um, we will go into what happened and a few more details in that respect but not today so starting from the night before it happened before she was born I say about 10 p.m. I was watching Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, just, you know, on the sofa, cuddling my bump as I always did. Celebrity had actually finished and I was sat, you know, just thinking about Prim and thought, hmm, when's the last time I felt her move? Like, I haven't felt her move for a little while. And she was always more active in the evening, so it wouldn't have been unusual for me not to feel her too much in the day. But I did feel her throughout the day of Sunday and, you know... I had no reason to be alarmed over everything. Once I thought, and ha I just had this little tiny thought, it wasn't a concern or anything like that, I just thought, oh, I haven't felt her move much this evening. So I just sat there for a minute after Celebrity and, and just waited for her to kick. I was sort of feeling my bump and trying to wake her up a little bit. And I felt, you know, what well, felt like her head push out. So I was like, oh, she's fine, it's, it's fine, I'll just go to bed. So I went to bed and thought nothing of it because I, I, you know, I was feeling her move so everything was fine. I went to bed and I'd lay there and I was just feeling a bit uncomfortable but it wasn't anything to be really concerned about. You always get sort of like aches and pains when you're heavily pregnant anyway so I didn't really see, you know, much going on with it. Anyway, I went to sleep, uh, I woke up about half four and I text Reese. I sat up and I, I was just text moaning like going, oh this is ridiculous, I'm so fed up, I'm so uncomfortable. And that was basically it, and I sort of just tried to lay down, um, and I thought, oh, I need a wee, so I got up and went for a wee, and as I was wiping, um, I noticed a tiny bit of, like, discharge, like, brownie, like, mucusy discharge on the tissue, like, the smallest amount, like, you wouldn't have even really noticed it unless you properly looked, but I saw it, and I instantly just thought, oh, it's my mucus plug, like, she's coming, like, it must be a sign that she's not going to be long, and at this time I wasn't having any contractions or anything like that. I literally just got up for a wee and, and noticed this tiny bit of like mucus on this tissue. Um, so I got up and I, I was in a panic. I, you know, I called my mum and I was like, oh, I think I've just lost a tiny bit of my mucus plug. Like, does that mean she's not going to be long? Like, I'm only 34 weeks. Like, I don't really want her to come early. What do you think I should do? And then as I was on the phone to my mum, like, and I was walking around downstairs because I didn't want to wake anyone up upstairs. I I noticed I was having some like contraction pains and they were coming like every couple of minutes quite quick um, and I started to really get upset then on the phone to my mum and she said to call the maternity unit. So, yeah so I finished talking to my mum and I thought oh I'll have like an orange juice or something, a really cold one to try and wake her up, to try and feel her move because since I woke up at half four I hadn't actually felt her move and this was only all within about you know a a 30 minute time scale considering um, from when I was downstairs calling my mum um, so it has it wasn't as if I'd left it long and so I was trying to wake her up um, walking around the kitchen with an orange juice and I went to the toilet again just to sort of check and I lost 
you know, a fair bit more of this plug, so I thought, and um, this mucousy stuff. So I then got upset because I noticed I was having the loss of the plug and I was having contractions. So I ran the maternity unit straight away and they said to come in. So I said, rang my mum back and said, you know, can you can you come with me? I said, I'll get Reese to come and, you know, see Penny. Um, there's no point stressing her out and separating her from, you know, us. Um, can you just pop along with me? And it, it really wasn't a concern, like, I just thought she was perhaps coming early and that, you know, it would be sort of a while before she actually came, so I just, yeah. I text Reese to say, you know, come and pick Penny up because I think things are happening, like, um, you know, yeah. So he came and picked Penny up, my mum was around within a few minutes and basically Reese and Penny went off and me and my mum went straight to the hospital. I didn't even bring my hospital bag because <laughs> I didn't really know what was going on, I didn't know if this was the real deal or, you know, I didn't expect, you know, much to happen but I didn't have any concerns or, you know, things. The main thing that I was worried about, I thought, if I am going into labour, you know, she's going to be Niku for a little while and that thought really frightened me. And that was my main concern at the time, I thought, God, I don't want her to come too early, I just want her to be healthy and safe and know to try and stay in there for as long as possible that was the worst outcome in my head was Niku initially um so we got to the hospital it was like a one born every minute kind of thing I walked into the maternity entrance and I was all giddy I was thinking oh you know I think I actually said out loud oh it feels like one born every minute going in you know early hours of the morning to have the baby the contractions were coming pretty strong by this point so by the time I was in the corridors of the maternity unit I was literally hands on hips like swaying trying to like breathe through them um so they were pretty intense at this point so me and my mum were brought into a room and they you know were just asking me the usual questions so you know what's going on and I just said I went to the toilet I lost a little bit of my plug and I'm having contractions obviously by this point it was obvious I was having contractions so they just came in they were like oh okay well I'll just go and get you a urine pot and you can give us a urine test and we'll just see what's going on so she came in she was like urine thing I was like oh it's okay I can I can do it now actually I actually really need a wee so I volunteered to do it there and then I got up I went to the toilet and went for a wee there was quite a lot of the mucus stuff that came out this time and it was a lot more um, substance of it basically and the lady came in to get the urine sample and she tr straight away asked me as soon as she saw it have you lost your waters and I I looked at her really blankly and I was like what no I haven't like not even a drip kind of thing and I, I kind of like laughed it off like what are you talking about um, and she kept asking me like are you sure are you sure you haven't lost your waters and I said no like not even a, a bit um, and then she went out and came back in and basically said it was baby it was meconium like baby poo um which you know now thinking about it when i look at it i think god why didn't i realize that um because you know looking in i can see it was meconium but then at the time in in the reality of things i didn't even think of that at all it was just like oh it's my plug um so i was a bit upset because i thought you know I, I associate that with the baby being in distress and something being a bit wrong so they went out of the room for a minute and they didn't seem like too concerned or anything you know they had they had a feel of concern but you know it was not like anything that imprinted on me as being really you know bad so they came in and they did you know a doppler test trying to find the heartbeat and they couldn't find it and at this point I wasn't surprised at all because every other time they tried to find a heartbeat of all the weeks that I've gone in she, it was always a struggle to find a heartbeat because she was always in such an awkward position so at this point I wasn't at all like alarmed or anything like that I just was kind of like oh yeah typical someone else tried and then they couldn't find the heartbeat and again I didn't see any issue at all because I'm used to hearing that and they always found the heartbeat and it was always brilliant so I wasn't alarmed and it wasn't until they came in with a scanning machine that I was a bit like hmm what's going on and it was a doctor so I kind of had a gulp in my throat but again I I just had no I don't know I just I don't know what I thought but I didn't think you know 
anyway, he did the scan um, and it was literally like a minute or so, but it felt more like three years. He just kind of like turned and looked at me and I just literally was like, don't say it. <laughs> I was like, don't say it. Um, and basically she didn't have a heartbeat at that moment. So I remember laying on the bed, my mum was there and I looked at my mum as they were checking, because they were, you know, they were checking. Um, I looked at her in a way that I've never looked at her before. Um, and I put my head to the side and I forced myself, forced, like, as in, like, I didn't think I blinked throughout the duration that that image was on the screen. I looked at that scan with every strength in my body to see my baby in my tummy for the last time until they took the scan off. They took that out and I remember a midwife, two midwives at my feet, about an, my mum and another midwife and the doctor and another midwife. There's so many people around me. Every part of my body had a midwife or a doctor or a mum. Um, and I literally felt like they were pinning me down because I felt like I wanted to kick off the table, like I was calling out, I was shouting no. Um, yeah, I was shouting no. Um, I was vomiting, I was sick everywhere, um, like violently sick. Um, I can't even describe that moment, like, you can't even process it, like, it's so sickening. The thought is so sickening, like, I can totally see why I was being sick, you know? And I just kind of it didn't even sink in, I was so shocked and just in another world, like, I just couldn't believe it. And then I remember a midwife coming to me and saying, Lorraine, obviously baby is coming and it seems like she's coming quickly, um, so things are going to progress quite quickly. So we need to talk about pain relief um, and things like that. Um, she said, you know, baby is breech, so she's gonna be born breech, feet first. She said she advises me having um, a morphine injection. I don't know if it's diamorphine or just morphine. I don't, I can't really remember. I just remember hearing the word morphine. Um, it was a flipping painful injection. It wasn't nice, um, but I didn't even really care. I just was just, I had no feeling of my body whatsoever. I just didn't care at that point. I was just like, whatever, do whatever. I just, there was no words. Once I told her that I'd have the morphine injection um, that was gonna go in my leg, um, she, I started to like realize like Reese, like, oh my God, like I need to tell Reese and I want Reese and I was just calling out for him. And they turned around to me really seriously and said to my mum to call Reese, but not to tell him what had happened but just to tell him to come here and to come here quickly um because he had to drop Penny off at his mum and dad's house um and it wasn't safe for him to drive knowing the truth of what was going on my mum was really upset she was really worried that you know he wouldn't forgive her for lying um, to get him there, for not telling him as soon as she knew. Um, I felt horrendous because I just wanted him there. I wanted to tell him. I wanted to talk to him about. And it was the worst feeling knowing that he was on his way and he didn't know what happened, what was going on. Like, he would have thought, you know, she was just on her way. And it was just. It was the worst thing ever. Um, but obviously, the most important thing is that he got to the hospital safely. So I did totally understand why. Um, but it was just really difficult. Anyway, it felt like the longest wait in the world for him to get to the hospital. But he came to the hospital, and I kind of, I don't, I kind of like block it out. But you know, the minute that we told him what was wrong, I don't think he said anything. I don't even think I looked at his face. <laughs> um, and yeah, I can't really remember that. I just know that he was broken. And I kind of remember, you know, getting the morphine injection after that. Um, 
and then it was the contractions were just so intense that I was kind of like in my own world and the morphine um made me like really like edge out sort of thing but it wasn't as if I didn't know 100% what was going on I knew of everything happening around me I still had every feeling of what was going on um but it was sort of just like zoning me out a little bit I suppose you could say but nowhere near enough <laughs> that's for sure as it got to the end of labour I really started to feel an urge to push and it was an urge I was trying to fight like I kept pointing down to my bits because I could feel something I could feel her and I could feel that she was coming and obviously with her being breached like her feet were coming out first and I really could feel almost like it just you know the feet were there I could just feel it <sighs> it's so hard to talk about it I was calling out for her telling her no um begging her to stop begging her to stay um and just basically just sobbing my absolute heart out for her <laughs> yeah I can't really remember some of the things I was saying I was shouting out a lot apparently that um Penny was gonna hate me um, I was going to be an awful mum and she was going to hate me and that I could never do this again um, and just shouting out all sorts of like awfulness um, and he's told me after you know I was saying some pretty horrendous things that's what I felt like, I felt that I felt like I was just going to be horrendous I felt like my heart was broken and it was like it was definitely 100% broke I felt every single thing like when they checked me and said that you know, she's coming, like they could see her feet and her toes. I just, I just held on, like I wanted to keep her there, I wanted to keep her inside of me. And I tried to squeeze her back in. <laughs> I tried to clench up and keep her there. So I didn't push, I tried not to push, but I couldn't help but push. I clenched my teeth. Oh yeah. And when it came to like delivering her, you know, her head and her shoulders and that main part of her body, um, like the pain, obviously the ring of fire and all of this nonsense. Like with my daughter, it was like really painful. <laughs> um, but with Prim, it was like. I couldn't feel it. I knew it was there, but I couldn't feel it. I felt so numb. I didn't even care about the pain. It was more like it was hurting me more in here than it was down there. Um, it felt like my heart was on fire instead of my nanny. The pain wasn't even an issue. It was sort of like the head hadn't been delivered yet. And she was, I could just feel her like hanging there. Not hanging. <laughs> I could just feel her like partly out of me and it felt like the most emptiest feeling in the world to give birth to a dead baby. I felt so empty before she'd even completely left my body. Like the emptiness feeling I got was insane, like undescribable. Um, and then she was fully born at 10.50, 3rd of December, and I remember then they were like faffing or doing something with her or probably just cutting the cord and giving her a wipe over and things like that. But I literally, I was just like, I want to see her, pass me her, I want to see her right now. And they did, like they put her straight onto my chest. put her straight onto my chest and oh she was so beautiful so beautiful like more than I ever imagined and she just looked so peaceful it almost brought joy because she was so perfect Almost instantly after I had her on my chest and I stared at her face, I said, to, I want my camera, parts from my camera, and I started to take pictures of her. And I realised.
realised that I hadn't even looked at her hands and some of the first pictures I took was of her face and I took a picture of me holding her hand with her little hand gripping on my finger. Um, my head hurts so much right now. Um, it's like exhausting and hurting, even physically hurting, talking about this. She was wrapped up in blankets um, and put in a cold cot, which was the most amazing thing in the whole wide world, by the way. <laughs> cold cots are invaluable at a time like that. I think I'll do a separate video on, you know, the aftercare and the time we spent together um, after she was born, because that's definitely something I want to document. Um, but that's basically her birth. It was just so painful, like, it was just so... It was horrendous, amazing, and heartbreaking, all in one, and that's the most confusing, conflicting set of emotions you can ever have. <laughs> but it's all we have, um, so those memories are horrendous, and I get flashback of her birth all the time, and they keep me up at night. But at the same time, I treasure them and I like thinking about holding her hand and the moment she was put on my chest, like their memories for me. Yeah, I think that's kind of all I want to go into today because it's just a bit much. Um, yeah, so I'm going to cut it here and pick it up another day and talk about the aftercare after she was born because I feel like there's a lot of important things that I want to document uh, on that part. I'm definitely going to do that and when the investigation is done and I can talk about what happened to her properly then I will do when the time is right of course and I just want to be able to help someone else. Like, I can't imagine anyone else doing this. Like I'm feeling what I'm feeling because it just torments me, it torments me to think that other people have gone through this before or are going to go through this in the future and I want this video to be there for when they do because I know they will, I know this will keep happening, it breaks me. Anyway, I'm off because I think I just need to have a cry. Thank you so much for all your support. I read all of your messages. I don't respond to them all, but I do read them all and they mean so, so much to me. And Prim and Reese and Penny and my mum and everyone in my family and Reese's mum and dad. Like, they don't see them, I don't think, but um, it means a lot to know that you're thinking of me and my family and Prim. So thank you. The only other place that I really talk about Prim is on my Instagram, so you can go and follow me there and read back over the journey so far if you want to. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. And if you're someone that's gone through pregnancy loss, stillbirth, um, and baby loss, then I'm truly sorry. And I know exactly how you feel. <laughs>